Uh, welcome to this uh, embedded system design and IoT and PCB design uh, masterclass series. I warmly welcome you to the session. Thanks for coming and thank you for your time. If I'm audible, just type yes in the chat box. If I'm not audible, just type no in the chat box. I'm ready for a chat. Okay, it will take uh, 20 seconds to reach me. Uh, if I'm audible, just type yes in the chat box. Uh, if I'm not audible, uh, just type no in the chat box. Uh, please don't type presence in the chat box uh, you will be given an attendance form at the end of the session or at the mid of the session okay okay i'll increase the volume okay okay so thank you so much uh thank you so much uh uh thank you rajesh uh thank you bidla thank you vajira akbar thank you hetwick thank you uh, pfizer thank you uh just type your uh, city okay just type your city in the chat box i would like to know uh, where you are from and uh, so that everyone will know like uh, where you are from just type your city in the chat box okay? just type your city okay i have shared uh, uh, sunil kumar like i have shared the uh, ppt as a pdf format through email uh, definitely i will ask my team to share that on face uh, on whatsapp as well as on the telegram group Bangladesh, okay, Tamil Nadu, Pondicherry, Delhi, okay. So we have a very good uh, mixture from every part of the world as well as from India. Okay, so thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's go for the uh, session. So uh, what you will learn today, okay. So today uh, we will be covering up uh, what is the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller and what is DSP processor, digital signal processor, and what is the difference between a microcontroller and microprocessor and DSP processor and what is the difference between uh, CPU and a DSP processor, and what is CPLD, uh, what is FPGA, and what is uh, SOC, system on chip. We'll be covering up all those differences today, and some like uh, system on modules, okay? And then we'll be covering up the selection of package, how to choose the package uh, for uh, your embedded system design, so that uh, what kind of production tool will be required for you uh, for, uh, for assembling, and what is the processor selection criteria? Okay, what are the key points you have to go through uh, while choosing a processor? That we'll be discussing the third point. And fourth is hardware design flow. Okay, what are the steps in hardware design flow? And what are the steps in software design flow? Okay, and uh, we'll be discussing about uh, what is simulation and what are the simulation softwares available in the market and what is evaluation and what is emulation. Okay, so these are the things which we'll be learning today. Uh, if you are excited, just type excited on the chat box uh, uh, before we go into the session. Uh, I'll give a short introduction about Pantech and about me, and then we can go for the session. Okay. So uh, those who are new to this uh, session today, so Pantech was started in the year 2004. Like we basically manufacture uh, microcontroller boards, uh, DSP boards, and FPGA boards. We do also manufacture uh, AI development boards, and we also sell reconfigurable AI algorithms. So if you want to know more about our products and services, just log on to our website, fantaxsolutions.net. Okay. Our vision is to uh, help 10 million students to learn the technology in an easy way. Uh, like so far, we have trained 3 lakh plus students on YouTube. And uh, this year, uh, we have a target of training around 10 lakh plus students on YouTube okay, on embedded system design and artificial intelligence. Uh, so uh, about me, uh, my name is MK Jeevarajan. You can call me as a Jeeva or MK, uh, whatever uh, you want, and uh, don't call me a sir. Okay, uh, uh, I will be happy if you call me by name. And uh, I have completed my uh, bachelor degree in the year 2002 from College of uh, from Government College of Engineering in Bago, and uh, my masters in College of Engineering in Gindi in India. Uh, uh, I'm basically from Applied Electronics. Uh, so my primary expertise is on uh, uh, designing development boards. Like I used to work on various microcontrollers and uh, DSP processors. I have worked nearly around uh, to 14 to 15 manufacturers uh, like uh, Texas Instruments, Intel, and uh, um, Xilinx, Altira, and analog devices. Uh, so this session is about sharing my knowledge with you. Uh, I have also worked on various machine learning algorithms and deep learning algorithms on MATLAB as well as on Python. So uh, if you wish to connect with me, uh, I have provided my LinkedIn link in the description. I'll also share my LinkedIn link. Just give me a moment. I'll share you my LinkedIn link. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay. Okay. 
I just share my LinkedIn link. Okay. So if you uh, want to connect with me, okay, just send me a connection request. I'm happy to connect and happy to help. If you have any kind of suggestions or problems with the course or anything, just ping me on LinkedIn. I am very active on LinkedIn and I will reply within 24 hours. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, so um, uh, yesterday PPT has been sent through email. Okay. Please do check your emails. Uh, I will also sh share it back. If you are new to, the, if, if this is the today's session, this is the first session for you, uh, then I'll be sharing it again on email. Okay. So I will increase search creations. I will increase my voice. Okay. I'll increase my voice. Please don't uh, spam the chat. So the attendance form uh, will be available at the end of the session. So, uh, uh, so the minimum attendance required to get a free e certificate, okay, is 27 days. You may get a waiver for one or two days, okay, but uh, minimum 27 days is mandatory. Please do fill the uh, attendance form carefully because uh, the software which is issuing the certificate will fetch the, fetch your name only from this attendance form, okay. So, if you have received the certificate with the wrong name or wrong college name, it means you have filled the form wrongly, okay because there is nothing to do manual it's everything is automated so if you uh, if you have received the free e certificate uh, with a spelling mistake uh, you have entered uh, the attendance form wrongly okay so please do carefully fill the forms for all the 30 days for internship candidates no need to fill the form all you have to do is after watching the video on the portal okay you just give complete and continue there will be a complete and continue on the top on the of every video so just give complete and continue on the top so that will mark the attendance Okay, and once you complete the course, you'll receive the internship certificates. So some sessions, if I'm not able to present it on live, I'll be using the recorded video streaming, especially if it is a lab session, I'll be recording those videos and I'll be streaming it on YouTube. So if you have any questions, uh, you can post it on the YouTube live. So for the internship candidates, have in the VIP Telegram group. So please do join that VIP Telegram, Telegram group. I'll be issuing a Google form to fill your questions and I'll be answering your questions on that. Okay. So videos will be removed from YouTube uh, after three to five days. Uh, if you want to uh, revise or if you want to uh, recap, uh, please go through the video within three to five days. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, so please don't, uh, please don't. I will, I will increase my voice. Uh, please don't uh, type present sir on the chat box. Okay. I'm a. So before I proceed, I would like to confirm: Am I audible? Am I audible or not? Uh, because I, I do see a lot of uh, chats to increase my voice. Am I audible or not? Please, please confirm if I'm audible, just type yes in the chat box. If I'm not audible, just type no in the chat box. I'll go with the majority, okay? Uh, sorry. Uh, so please do confirm if I'm audible. Uh, just type yes in the chat box. I'm ready for a chat because I have few uh, few people's uh, like telling to raise the voice. Uh, so if I'm audible, just type yes. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your confirmation. Uh, anyhow, I'll increase my volume and increase my voice. Okay. So uh, let's start the day with a, a mindset lesson. So today mindset lesson is about uh, is about uh, I'm going to share you a video file at the end of the session. Okay. So the link is also available on the PPT. So this is a, a video. Actually, it's a radio talk uh, by uh, L Nightingale. Okay, the strangest secret in the world. Okay, I want you to uh, hear this audio file. Uh, so uh, I, I'll share a YouTube link. So please do watch the subtitles. Uh, so please do watch the titles. Uh, I have gone through this audio for more than hundred plus times. So I want you to uh, listen to this audio at least once. Okay, this audio was. Uh, was released in 1960s okay so it has created a lot of millionaires in united states uh, so i want you to go through this audio at least once okay so uh, so that's the activity today okay so if you want if you want to make a change like if you want to uh, have a change in your life uh, like uh, please do listen this to an audio file once okay uh, so today uh, lesson is about uh, it's all about your thoughts Okay, your thoughts are much more powerful. So you become what you think. Okay, uh, 
uh, if you, uh, uh, all day long. Okay, so uh, if you were so so your thoughts are much much more powerful that you can it can shape you. Okay, if you think in positive terms, you will get positive results. If you think in negative terms, you will get negative results. So please do mind your thoughts. Okay, what kind of thought you are dwelling, whether it is a positive thought or negative thought. If it is negative thought, you have to come out of it soon. It is just like drinking poison yourself. Okay, so uh, please do uh, have only positive thoughts. Okay, so please do mind your thoughts. Your thoughts are much more powerful that will shape you. Okay, so you become what you think about all day long. So this is the lesson which I like to share you today. Uh, please do watch this uh, audio file. I will share you the link uh, at the end of the session so that you can listen to the audio file okay uh, so let's start the session today if you are ready to learn just type rtl in the chat box if you are ready to learn just type rtl in the chat box i'm waiting for a chat okay rtl in the chat box so uh, youtube viewers uh, like uh, there is uh, i want i would like to address a chat from uh, pianshu gupta okay uh, pianshu gupta uh, we have issued more than 3 lakh plus certificates uh, uh, if you want to show up, like I can show up, okay. So uh, you have, you should have a minimum attendance of 25, 25 plus days. You can check our Google reviews on, uh, uh, so we have around uh, 13 plus Google reviews, okay. So uh, all you need is you have to attend for more than 25 plus days, okay, to get a free attendance certificate. Uh, so nothing like that. Okay. So the intention is to learn. So you please do check the quality of the content. If the quality of the content is not good, please do post your comments on YouTube. So I will go through your comments and let me correct myself. Okay. So let's go through the, uh, let's go through the content. So thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, thank you so much for those who type RTL in the chat box. Okay. So uh, let's start with uh, microprocessors, okay? Uh, there are a lot of processors available in the market. We have microprocessors, we have microcontrollers. Even in microcontrollers, we have 8-bit, 16-bit, uh, 32-bit, okay? So which can do a 8-bit calculation, like the registers is of 8-bit, and registers is, will have, you have 16-bit registers in 16-bit microcontrollers, and 32-bit, you have 32-bit registers. So it has a good mathematical capability, okay? So um, uh, so inside the microcontroller, you have only the arithmetic logic unit, ALU unit. So you can do a complex mathematical calculation on a 32-bit microcontroller when you compare with the 8-bit microcontroller, okay? So the next is the DSP processor, digital signal processor. So there are a lot of manufacturers like Blackfin, uh, which belongs to analog devices, and uh, TIDSPs, Texas Instruments, okay? And you have CPLEs and FPGAs, complex programmer logical devices and FPGA, and you have general purpose processor, uh, which is used on your uh, laptop and, <coughs> sorry, laptop and uh, personal computers, and you have GPUs, uh, which is meant for graphic processing unit, which is uh, which is which is initially which was used for graphic processing unit, but today like uh, for image and processing, for image processing and uh, for uh, video processing applications, um, and especially for deep learning applications, they are using GPU. Okay, uh, and you have ASIC application specific integrated circuits, and we have uh, uh, we have uh, GPU and we have TPU tensor processing units. Okay, apart from this, we have SOC system on chip. Uh, having multi-core processors on a single chip. Okay, so these are the processes available in the market. There are a lot of manufacturers. As I said in the previous class, you can go through uh, digikey.com and you can check the number of manufacturers available on this uh, area, like micro for microcontrollers, for uh, for uh, for uh, for DSPs and for FPGs. Okay, so let's start with microprocessors. So microprocessor have the CPU. Okay, you have the CPU as a separate chip. As a separate chip and you have to interface the ram rom okay so usually the program code will be stored on rom and you will be having ram and all the interface peripheral interfaces like you what a spy i2c uh, all those interfaces you should interface a separate chip to the processor okay so you have to you have to uh, you have to design a pcb for that i'll show you an example so i'll show you an example of 8085 microprocessor okay uh, just give me a moment Okay. So uh, this is an 80, 80, 85, uh, 8085 uh, board, okay, which was uh, designed by us. So eighty eighty five is a microprocessor. So if you check, this is an eighty eighty five microprocessor chip. Okay, you have the EEPROM. This is a 
uh, flash 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 memory electrically reusable from non volatile okay and you have the ram and you have the ur so everything you will have separate chip whereas when you compare that with a microcontroller everything is available on a single chip okay so i'll show you the board of uh, 8051 so this is the board of 8051 okay so the the <coughs> sorry the prom uh, the flash memory uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the rom the ram as well as uh, the peripheral interface like uart uh, uh, everything is available gpios so everything is available uh, on the on the same chip okay whereas for uh, whereas for the microprocessor like um, uh, microprocessor everything is available on a separate chip you have to interface and you have to do a pcb design okay but uh, uh, the, you have extended capability in microprocessor okay you have extended capability in microprocessor whereas microcontroller you don't have it is limited you have limit the program memory is limited the data memory is limited and gpios are limited okay and the peripheral interface are limited okay whereas in microprocessor you can expand that's one advantage you can expand most of the personal computers are microprocessors okay the the, the cpu which has is a microprocessor 8085 is a microprocessor 8086 is a microprocessor and 8051 uh, is a microcontroller okay so you will have a different package this is a dip package okay so everything is available on a single chip everything like uh, like the u what all the peripherals u what spy i2c uh, can control area network adc some microcontrollers will have an on chip unlock to digital converter okay and timers so everything is available on a single chip like you have in dip package you have this is a quad flat package okay sorry lqfp package lqfp package uh, 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 quad flat package and this is a plcc package okay plastic lead chip carrier these are different type of packages available for the same microcontroller if you take 8051 the 8051 will be available on this dip package it is it will also be available on the quad flat package it, it will also be available on the plcc package is the definition of uh, the microprocessor like the difference between a microprocessor and microcontroller is clear for you just type clear in the chat box okay uh, if it is not clear if you want me to repeat the topic again just type repeat in the chat box i'll go with the majority okay is that is that is that clear is that clear just type i'm waiting for a chat okay so is that clear is that clear that clear i'm waiting for chat is that clear oh uh, thank you shugail thank you nirvan thank you and rohit thank you okay uh Harina, thank you bindu thank you and uh adi prakash thank you bhavani is asking for repeat and lanka is asking for also repeat okay so i see a lot of repeats here okay uh so uh, i just repeat i just repeat the topic again okay so uh microprocessor you, you take when you take 80, 80 85 and 8086 is an example for microprocessor okay so microprocessor has extended capability like you can extend the gpios okay uh, you will be connecting the data bus and address bus to a ppa uh, parallel peripheral interface like the 8255 chip okay so everything is a different integrated circuits so like if you want a flash memory uh, you need to you need to go with a different chip if you need a ram you need to go with a different chip you need different integrated circuits ic and you need uh, uart you go with a different ic you integrate with a person like with a pcb printer circuit boards okay and you have to do a layout you have to, to integrate all those things so that is a microprocessor whereas in microcontroller okay so microcontroller is meant for mostly for embedded system design uh, so everything is available on a single chip okay so uh, the, all the peripherals like you what uh, the parallel uh, port the timers adc can cutlery networks all peripherals will be available on a single package okay inside this this chip will also have the memory to store the code okay as well as to store the data memory as well as the interface so that is a microcontroller but the but it is limited it has limited limited number of gpios limited number of peripherals Okay, and limited number of program memory and data memory whereas microprocessor you can expand you have it has extended capability you are uh, like the pc is a microprocessor okay you have so is that clear is that clear is is that clear now uh, uh just type clear in the chat box i'm waiting for a chat is that clear <coughs> sorry 
sorry uh is that clear is that clear yeah uh harshit so one ex uh, limited in the sense like it is meant for ml system design okay so expandable in the sense like you can expand the gpios number of gpios for example if you take a uh, uh, 8051 like it has uh, four ports and each port has eight pins okay uh, so 32 ios uh, whereas uh, if you take uh, the microprocessor you can expand by using number of you can increase the number of 8255 chips okay so that's that's a So microprocessor can be used for general purpose. Okay. So I have a question like, is is that microprocessor general purpose device or single purpose device? Uh, Teju Shruti, like a uh, microprocessor, the the one the uh, the CPU, the AMD, uh, whatever what you what you see on your personal computers or microprocessors. Uh, so it can be I can act as a general purpose device. Okay. So microcontrollers is not general purpose. It's meant for the single purpose or it meant for embedded system design. Which performs only the specific task. Okay, this answer is for Teju. Okay, so uh, okay. So yesterday PPT, mother one like yesterday PPT, we have sent through email. Okay, I have sent through email. Please do check your emails. The first two lines of the uh, email contains the PPT. Okay. So thank you, thank you so much. Let's go for the next. Okay, let's go for digital signal processor. So what is digital signal processor? So digital signal processor is meant for mathematics. Okay, you can do a complex mathematical calculations on digital signal processor, and it usually usually you can run applications like uh, hard real time constraints. Okay, which is meant for uh, hard real time means uh, missing a deadline may cause a havoc or a catastrophe. So that is hard real time. Okay, and it has a capability to process infinite continuous data streams. It means. Uh, you can interface with them uh, with uh, with the mic which generates uh, data infinite data as long as you speak to the mic it generates data else it will pick up the uh, noises which is available on the surroundings or a camera okay the camera will give you the stream continuously okay so uh, and so so dsp processor has the capability to process the frames because each camera when you take a camera each camera will will generate 30 frames per second or 45 frames per second based on the specification okay some cameras will have even 60 frames per second it means it captures 60 still images within a second okay 1000 frames per second it captures 1000 images within a second so dsp processor has the capability of handling that in that kind of infinite continuous data streams okay it also has a mac mac capability multiplane and accumulate capability okay. it means uh, like uh, it can fetch and execute multiple instructions in a uh, like uh, multiple in, in a single cycle okay so that's mac capability and dsp processors or microprocessor designed for efficient mathematical it's specifically for doing complex mathematical calculations okay so uh, if you take any kind of transform like a fourier transform or laplace transform or where transform uh, Hadamard transform, uh, you have only a complex mathematical calculation. Okay. Microcontroller cannot process this complex mathematical calculation. And DSP processor has uh, like floating point capability. You can handle data. Even some, some advanced microcontrollers uh, can do that, like uh, especially on Cortex M4 or um, the advanced version of ARM microcontroller has the DSP engine. But DSP has specially designed for. Uh, the image, video, audio applications, as well as signal processing applications. Okay, so is that clear? Is the definition of a DSP processor is clear for you? Uh, it's meant for doing mathematics. Okay, is that clear? Uh, so when you compare, sorry, uh, Max stands for multiplayer and accumulate. Okay, uh, Aditya, like a Max stands for multiplayer and accumulate. Uh, so is that clear? Just type clear in the chat box. So, uh, Aris legend, like uh, 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 the course, the fifth course will be automatically enrolled. So, no, no, no worries. The fifth course will be automatically enrolled. Okay. Is that clear? Uh, I will increase my volume. I will increase my volume. Is that clear? So, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Snega, Varun, thank you, Tejas, thank you, Anil Kumar, thank you. Okay. Abhinash, thank you. Ajay Tech, thank you. Uh, Tejas, Ashwin, thank you. Uh, and uh, Lanka, thank you.
okay so uh, when you when you compare with the gpu general purpose processor general purpose processor gpu processor uh, like general pro- uh, purpose processor like uh, uh, wherever you have uh, where, wherever you need large memory okay and wherever you need uh, wherever where power is not a constraint where space is not a constraint then you can go for general purpose processor where uh, time is not a constraint real time is not a constraint then you can go for general purpose processor okay so wherever you have uh, like wherever, wherever you need higher precision higher accuracy cost cost saving uh, and smaller in size and low power consumption and processing of signals in real time you need to go for a dsp processor when you compare gp when you compare a normal cpu with a dsp processor so uh, dsp processor uh, stands for the precision it's because it can support floating point dsp floating points okay and uh, it is very cheaper you can get for 500 500 rupees 2000 rupees and smaller in size okay and uh, like it can operate on 3.3 volt whereas the whereas the general purpose processor it need it, it requires like a 15 volt like 15 volt for power supply okay plus 15 volt and minus 15 volt power supply so which will dissipate more heat and it needs a cooling fan at the back of the processor when you go for a gpu oh so uh, so so when you compare gpu and dsp like dsp it's for embedded okay it's for em- for processing uh, like image if, when if you want to design a digital camera if you you can use a dsp processor okay so these are all the applications of dsp processor so so basically there are two kind of architectures okay the general purpose, the general purpose processor which is used on your your laptop or the 8085 or 8086 they use a one human architecture okay whereas uh, the microcontrollers uh, the advanced the arm core the arm microcontrollers and the dsp processor they use howard architecture basically there are two types of architecture usually usually this question is asked on mostly on interview questions like what is the difference between the one human architecture and one, the howard architecture in one human architecture the cpu has the same address bus and data bus to the program memory as well as the data memory okay since it uses the same uh, bus you can either fetch the program or either fetch the data you cannot do it simultaneously on one human architecture Whereas in Howard architecture, you have a separate address bus and data bus for the program memory as well as for the data memory so that you can fetch the uh, program uh, simultaneously, you can also fetch the data. So that's the advantage of Howard architecture. But the reason microcontrollers and re- has, uh, has the uh, modified Howard architecture and the super Howard architecture, okay, they have modified this. But basically, these are the two architectures which is widely used in the market. Okay. So uh, is that clear? Is the difference between the one human architecture and the Howard architecture is clear? And why do we need DSP processor is clear? Just type clear in the chat box. If you want me to repeat, just type repeat in the chat box. I'll repeat, okay? I'm waiting for the chat. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay, I'll make my video small. Just give me a moment. Let me... Okay. Okay. Venget is asking for volume. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Let me go for CPLDs and FPGAs. Okay. A CPLD stands for Complex Programmable Logical Devices. Okay. Basically, it, Complex Programmable Logical Devices is nothing but it has multiple PLDs in a single chip. Okay, uh, PLDs are nothing but to have multiples programmable array logic and programmable logical array on a single chip. Okay, if you don't know what is programmable array logic and programmable logical array, it is nothing but you will have an AND or gates. Okay, where you can program this AND or gates to implement a Boolean function. If you want to implement a truth table, you can program this AND or gates to implement to implement the truth table. Okay, so. Uh, if you when when this when you have more number of PALs and PLDs, it becomes PLD, program logical devices. If the PLDs becomes complex, then it becomes CPLD, complex program logical devices. Okay. Uh, CPLDs are widely used for control oriented. Wherever you use a microcontroller, you can use CPLD. Okay. You cannot use a CPLD for a DSP processor, but you can use FPGA. Uh, for uh, wherever you use a DSP processor, you can use an FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Arrays. It's data path oriented. So FPGA can do a complex mathematical calculation, but CPLD cannot do a complex mathematical calculation. Okay, so FPGA is data path oriented and CPLD is control oriented. 
you can implement a microcontroller architecture inside CPLD, but you cannot implement a DSP architecture inside the CPLD. Okay. Whereas in FPGA, you can implement a DSP architecture inside an FPGA. Okay. Is that clear? Is that clear? <coughs> Sorry. Is that clear? Just type clear in the chat box. Um, I'm waiting for chat. Is that clear? I'm waiting for chat. So examples, Harshit is asking an example for a DSP processor. You have a shark processor from analog devices, black friend processor is there. And you have a Texas instruments, you have TMS320 C6000 series. Uh, and uh, if you, if you, especially if you are using motor control, uh, then you can use TMS320 F2812. Okay, that is a digital signal controllers. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, FPGA full form is a field programmable gate arrays. Okay, field programmable gate arrays. I'll explain you the architecture of CPLE. You have the logic blocks to implement the logic functions, okay? And you have the I/O blocks, which has which is interconnected with the I/O pins, okay? And you have the clock routing, which supplies clock to the logic cells, okay? And you have uh, the routing matrix, okay? And uh, you have the routing matrix, uh, which can interconnect the logic cells. So there is no there is uh, there is no processor core here. There is no memory here, and there is no multiplayers here. Okay? So it cannot do any mathematical processing. CPLEs. So, but the advantage of CPLE is okay, you can customize the IO pin. For example, you take 851. Okay, 851 has one single UART. Or if your application needs 10 UART, then you can go with a CPLE. You can customize yourself. Okay, inside the chip, if you take an 851, uh, inside you cannot you cannot modify anything inside the chip. Okay, you you, you cannot do that. You can write program for the 851. And you can download the program inside the 81, but you cannot customize the uh, peripherals inside. You cannot customize the architecture. Whereas in CPLD, you can have your own design. You can customize the number of peripherals you want. If your application requires 10 UART, in, in, in one single chip, you can do that by using, you can have 10 UARTs. That's the advantage of CPLD. Is that clear? Is the difference between a microcontroller and a CPLD is clear? Just type clear in the chat box. Okay, is that clear? The clocking, Mohammed, the clocking, uh, clock routing supplies because the logic cells requires clocks. Whenever you need, whenever you have a synchronous circuits, it, you have to supply clock. So clock routing uh, provides clock for the ne necessary logic cells. Okay. Okay. So I'll just repeat. Uh, what language? Uh, no one is asking like what language you use for FPGA. You can use, uh, I just repeat that, I repeat the question. Um, uh, no one, Iranga, use like what language you use for FPGA? You can use hardware description language, Verilog or VHDL. You can also use C language. You can also use Python. Okay, so whatever you want. Uh, like if you t if you ask me the question before 10 years back, you have only two, two there, there is only two language which should support. It supports only the hardware description language. But today, like they have compilers, you have, they have Xilinx, if you take Xilinx, uh, Xilinx have Xilinx platform studio where you can write the program on C language. The code will be generated. The hardware description, the IP cores, you have, the IP cores will be generated. Okay. You can download the core uh, and you can write the program for that. You can also write the application code. You can have it on C language. You have the GUI. The Xilinx provides a GUI uh, to generate the code. That's like a graphical programming. You can customize the core. You can uh, processor and uh, you can customize the peripherals. And the code is the IP core. You can choose whether you want bigger shell code or very log code. Generate the code and download the code, and then you can write it. The write the application code on C language. Okay, this answer is for no one. Okay, so uh, for FPGA, can we use Java? Um, uh, as per my knowledge, uh, the, no, no, there is no compiler for that. Okay, but. Microcontrollers, some microcontrollers support Java. Okay. FPG architecture. Okay, let's uh, FPG. If you check the FPG architecture, you have the logic blocks, you have the IO blocks, clock routing, and routing matrix. Three things are additional. One is the memory. Okay, the other thing is the, the other is the multiplayers. Okay, the multiplayers and the DSP blocks. Okay, the other is the processor core. The processor core means uh, there are two kinds of core in FPG. One is the soft core. The other is the hard core. Okay, soft core means you have to download the core. Okay, you have to download the architecture by the software. Whereas hardcore means 
the core is manufactured in the fab itself in the uh, um, fabrication okay at the fabrication end, it, it is hardwired in the silicon the one example for the hardcore processor is a vertex fpga which has the power pc the power pc architecture is from ibm it is a 64 bit architecture okay whereas micro blaze is a 32 bit risk architecture it's a soft core processor where a core is created if you want two core you can use you can create two core by using the software if you want four core you can create four core uh, by using the software okay and you can customize the peripherals you want 10 watts you can you can have 10 watts you have if you want any other adcs and dac and the ethernet anything you can add okay so and you can download download the, uh, the internal the internal components can be customized by the user that's the advantage of fpga is that clear uh, Dhanashree is telling it's too hard to understand. It's nothing long, not, nothing like that, nothing like that. Okay. So all you have to do is just watch the video again. It will be very clear. It's very, very clear. It's very simple. Okay. FPGAs and CPLEs can be customized by the user, whereas microcontrollers and DSP processor cannot be customized by the user. Okay. So that's the advantage of FPGAs and CPLEs. It's a reconfigurable device. Okay. It's just like a tailor made. You can have your, you can design your own. Uh, shirts okay uh, like whereas if you buy the ready-made shirts it's just like microcontroller okay microcontroller is just like ready-made shirts you purchase you cannot change anything whereas you buy cloths and just tailor-made is what you can design yourself it's the fpg is like that you can customize yourself okay Uh, Hari Prasad, like for mechanical students, only you have to take a call. If you belong to a mechatronics, if you belong to a mechatronics, and if you have electronics in your category, this course will help you. If you, especially if you work on robotics or if you work on Internet of Things or any kind of things. But if you like, if you, if it is in pure mechanical part, uh, I, I think, uh, I think uh, it will not help you. Only you have to take a call. This course is meant for the. Uh, for the electronics if you want to learn electronics or if you want uh, for a for kind of any kind of electrical engineering or computer science students who want to learn uh, the microcontrollers and microcontrollers uh, you can this course is for them okay okay so uh, uh, Shamim Hazan is asking what is the difference between VLSI and Vigil see a uh, VLSI is very large scale integration okay if I want to explain about VLSI like then I have to go to the Moore's law and I have to it's a big theory but in VLSI, like a uh, VHL is just a programming language. Okay. Uh, VHL is just a programming language, uh, like as like very low. So VLSI is a, is a very large scale integration where you can have more number of chips inside the integrated circuits. Okay. It's very large scale integration. It means you can have more number of chips, more number of uh, transistors inside the chip, inside the chip, integrated circuits. So that is very low, very large scale integration. If you want the exact count of number of transistors which is available inside the integrated circuits, you just Google for uh, VLSI, uh, like you can like, you will get the count or just type Moore's law, you will get the count, okay. Uh, Chapel is asking like how to upgrade those who already registered in four internship to five internship. It will be, it will be automatically done, okay. No worries, like the course will be automatically enrolled for you, okay. Even if you purchase a single course for triple nine rupees, you will get five courses. No worries, no worries. If you, if you, if you not get that, please ping me on LinkedIn, okay. I'm, I'm available on LinkedIn to support you. So please ping, ping me on LinkedIn with your email ID. I will, go, I'll, I'll help you to uh, get all the five courses, okay.
sorry uh sorry uh sorry like uh i have i have sorry i have unmuted like um uh i was in i was in uh uh sorry uh, i was in medical leave for the past three weeks uh so i have some cough like still uh i have recovered completely but i have some cough so that's what i have muted uh but unfortunately like i have forgot to unmute uh, sorry for that uh so let me let me repeat this topic okay uh so fpga technologies okay fpga technologies are uh, like have srm uh srm technologies which is uh which is volatile so whenever whenever you power off the fpga uh like the the program will erase okay so that is srm based technologies it's most of the fpga is under this category uh you need a, a separate program from okay to store the store your program okay whereas flash the on chip the fpg some fpga will have on chip flash memory okay so that is um uh so very few very few has that like uh which comes with, uh, with extension called yen okay spot on 3a n it means n stands for non volatile okay the program will be still there on the fpga even if you power off so that is flash technology okay the, the next is the anti fuse technology which is one time programmable okay so uh, once you program that's all you cannot reprogram it again okay it's mostly used for toys kind of things okay uh, that's anti fuse technology is that clear is that clear is that clear now is that clear now uh, i think uh, before i proceed like uh, before i proceed uh, am am i audible or not am i audible or not just type yes in the chat box if i'm audible i'm waiting for a chat uh i'm waiting for a chat is that audible or not uh, because the chat will reach me with um uh it will your chat will reach you with 20 seconds okay is that am i audible am i audible okay thank you so much thank you so much thank you okay okay thank you so let's go for a difference between uh, when to use dsp and when to use fpga okay uh, when to use a digital signal processor and when to use an fpga when you compare dsp with fpga uh, fpga has much more advantage than dsp okay in terms of performance uh, since since the language itself uh, the hardware description language itself supports parallelism okay so whenever you have a parallel algorithm uh, dsp will take more advantage Uh, sorry fpga will take more advantage like it gives you the maximum performance uh, for example or uh, like in this example if you take if you implement the same program on a dsp processor uh, it will take 256 clock cycles okay to complete the uh, to complete the, uh, it will take 256 clock cycles to complete the task whereas in fpga uh, it takes only one clock cycle to complete this 256 operation because it implements parallel okay so when you take a fair filter like you have serial realization as well as parallel realization when you implement parallel realization fpga uh, it is more much more powerful than a dsp processor it can uh, it has higher performance because of its parallelism okay so it can do parallel so that's the advantage of uh, fpga which dsp uh, dsp did not have the dsp is sequential okay it has to come one by one okay so that's the advantage so uh, when to use dsp in fpg whenever you need higher performance and whenever you want to customize your own design okay optimize for speed and cost whenever you want to reduce the number of chips uh, then you can go for an fpg okay so how to reduce the number of chips in your embedded system design okay i'll give you an example in the next slide uh, uh, how to how to uh, okay okay rahul kumar is telling fpg is fast okay let me explain this example okay and then i will come back once again and i will repeat this topic okay so uh, this is the traditional embedded system design using a dsp processor okay traditional embeds using uh, in this board we have uh, texas processor uh, tms 320 c6711 dsp micro uh, dsp uh, processor okay so uh, if you if you if you get the details of this board okay you have the power supply unit you have the power supply unit you have the audio codec you have address decoder unit memory controller chips srams sd rams and display controller okay so this is a design by uh, dsp kit okay so if you want to implement the same thing on fpga okay fpga uh this power supply okay this power supply like the 7905 regulators the voltage regulators uh, will have power dissipation okay 
called half hour dissipation like it dissipates heat so that cannot be kept in zn fpga you cannot design a power supply unit in zn fpga okay so that let us let us remove that power supply part okay an audio codec audio codec uh, will be interfaced with the analog signals like any interface on audio codec with a mic okay so mic is an analog sensor so the audio codec will have the analog ground as well as the digital ground it has the analog signals as well as the digital signals so fpga is purely digital so you cannot mix up the analog signals inside so that cannot be kept inside an fpga okay the s rams and sd rams which will occupy more silicon area more it occupies more number of logic cells if you want to implement the s ram logic or sd ram logic inside the fpga that occupies more number of logic cells so that cannot be kept inside the rest of the part okay it can be incorporated on a single chip okay? and you can interface only the audio codec and power supply and SRAMs and SDRAM outside. Okay? So, so, so you can reduce the number of chips okay? by this FPGA, you have one single FPGA, you reduce the number of chips. When you compare, when you, when you compare with this board, uh, you reduce the number of components, okay? you reduce all these components, you put one FPGA and the rest of the parts you can, uh, you can have external. So by this, you can reduce the number of chips, you can reduce the complexity of the schematic design, you can reduce the complexity of the layout design, and you can reduce the signal integrity issues. Okay, So that's the advantage of FPGA, when you go for FPGA. Is that clear? Uh, FPGA is, FPGA, uh, Siki is asking if FPGA is more expensive. Yes, uh, FPGA is more expensive. Okay, so you, ha you can, uh, if you check on digiki.com, you have FPGA even for uh, 20 lakh, okay? Uh, if I want to say it on dollars, like it, it would be around like uh, uh, more 10,000 10, to 40,000 dollars, more than that. Okay, you please do check the you please do check the uh, pricing on digiki.com, which is used for uh, satellite aircrafts. Okay, uh, the satellite based applications, nuclear reactor. Uh, it depends upon the application, depends upon the application. You have to choose, like, uh, based on that, you have to choose whether to use a DSP processor or an FPGA. Okay, LC is counter, LC is counter. Okay. What do you mean by your fate is asking like what do you mean by LC? Like LC is current, just a current actually. That's a current. Okay. So So uh, the PPTs, the PPTs is shared in the, as a PDF format through email. I have already shared it on email. I will also share that on the groups. Okay, WhatsApp group as well as on the Telegram Telegram group. So uh, in order to overcome the competition, like uh, the DSP manufacturing companies, they come up with a multiple co multiple core on a single package, okay? Like uh, the dual core processors, uh, the quad core processors, okay? Uh, in if you when you go for having a more than one core uh, on a single package, it's a multi core processor. Uh, there are two types. One is symmetric multi processing, and the other one is asymmetric multi processing. Okay, uh, symmetric multi processing means like if the core is identical, then it is symmetric multiprocessing. Uh, if you take Raspberry Pi, uh, the Broadcom chip is symmetric multiprocessing as all the four cores are identical. Okay, Blackfin is an example. Uh, Blackfin and Raspberry Pi uh, chips at SOC uh, is, uh, is a symmetric multiprocessing. Uh, ESP32 is also a symmetric multiprocessing. It has both the cores are identical. Okay, uh, Asymmetric multiprocessing, you have different core. Okay, one example for asymmetric multiprocessing is a TA WOMAP series from Texas Instruments. WOMAP stands for Open Multimedia Application Platform. Okay, so you have the ARM core and you have the DSP core. So ARM core, just give me a moment. Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, ARM core is, uh, ARM core will take care of all the uh, control applications like uh, the touch screen. Uh, if you, if you check out the mobile phones which was manufactured in 2010 to 2014, uh, uh, sorry, 2013, like most of the mobile phones, they have this uh, warm up uh, series, okay, K okay, warm up series. ARM 11 will take care of all the uh, control applications like uh, the touch screen, GPS, uh, wireless LAN interface, Bluetooth interface, TCS, modem interface. Okay, that will be taken care of the ARM core. And D and you also have a DSP core, like TMS320C55X DSP, which will take care of the camera, which will take care of the audio, like and uh, memory card and like this 
you, so all this will be take care of the uh, uh, DSP core, okay? Uh, and it has USB. Everything is available on a single chip, okay? No need to interface any ICs. So everything is available on a single chip. So this is called a multi-core processor, okay? Or system on chip. So system on chip will have uh, multiple cores on a single package. So you have dual core processor. Uh, one example, example the, the chip which is available on Raspberry Pi is uh, SOC and uh, uh, ESP32 uh, is uh, an SOC. The chip which is available on ESP32 is an SOC. Uh, SOC and TI OMAP is, uh, is an SOC system on chip. Okay. Okay. So uh, is that clear? Is that clear till this point? Is that clear till this point? Is that clear? Yes, uh, like is RPA is or uh, 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 Raspberry Pi has a broadcast chipset. Okay, it's based on the ARM. It's based on the ARM, but it's a, uh, the core is based on ARM. Uh, ARM, but it's an SOC. It's a multiple core. Okay, it's a, it has multiple core. Okay, so OMAP stands for Open Multimedia Application Platform. Is that clear? Is that clear? Just type clear in the chat box if this is clear. Till if this. Presentation is clear till this point. It's just a clear in the chat box. I'll go through the next slide. Okay. How is FPGA is different from uh, how FPGA is different from uh, ASIC application specific integrated circuits? Okay. Uh, given OMAP's full form is open multimedia application platform. Okay. Uh, so ASIC is application specific integrated circuits. Like uh, for example, you you can you can design an integrated circuit specifically for an application. Okay. Uh, for, so that will that integrated circuits will do only that application. One example is the Intel Movidia stick is an example for ASIC. Okay, so the bit miner like ant min, uh, ant miner is an example for uh, which is used for mining. Uh, uh, Bitcoin miner is is an ASIC. Okay? It's an ASIC. It will do only that job. Okay, you have to. Uh, the problem is uh, you cannot modify that later. Okay, as like microcontrollers where you can modify the program, uh, FPGAs where you can modify this cannot be modified. Okay, and it is used only for large scale manufacturing. Only when you have large number of quantities, this will support. Otherwise, the, the NRE cost will be higher. NRE cost means non-recurring engineering cost. Okay, it, it is a one-time cost. Non-recurring engineering cost is a one-time cost. So that is very, very huge on ASIC. Only if you have like one lakh quantity or 10 lakh quantities, uh, like one million number of one million. If you if they if you order one million chips, uh, like uh, Companies like Xilinx or any semiconductor in, uh, companies will take the order. Otherwise, they won't take the order. They will never take the order for like 10,000 chips or uh, I'm not sure about 10,000 chips, but 1,000 chips, they will never take the order because the energy cost will be huge. Okay? Whereas FPGA, you can change the program. Okay, FPGA is field programmable. Okay, Field programmable gate is You can change, uh, you, can, you can program. That's, a, that's the advantage of FPGAs. Okay, so this is the comparison. You have microcontrollers. If you want to implement a simple door lock, you can go for microcontrollers. If you want to make the product price within 100 rupees, then you can choose microcontrollers, okay? So if you want to make a simple audio device, okay? A simple like, uh, um, a simple audio device like Bluetooth speaker or, or kind of thing or, or any audio applications or video applications, a enabled camera, or you can choose a DSP processor, okay? System on chip uh, is slightly higher like, Sorry, but some system on chip like the ESP32 is very cheaper. It's very cheaper when you compare with the when you compare with the uh, even with DSP processor. But some SOC is higher, and you cannot get for uh, for example like if you take Raspberry Pi. Okay, if you want to purchase a chipset from Broadcam, you cannot purchase from the market. That is, uh, none of the vendor will sell the chip. You have to sign an agreement with uh, the Broadcam. So Broadcam will will sell the chip only when you purchase one lakh quantity or like uh, ten thousand piece or twenty thousand piece. Uh, else they won't sell the chips. So that's the disadvantage of SOC. Okay, if you want to purchase a Snapdragon, uh, uh, like you cannot Qualcomm will not sell the chips. Qualcomm will not sell the chip. That's a most problem. The uh, the ESP thirty two ESP thirty two and the TA OMAP is the SOC which is available on the market where everyone can purchase. But to purchase the chips like from by like the chips from Broadcam and the Qualcomm, uh, you need a special user agreement which will like which will which uh, which will uh, they will share you the data sheet only when you uh, 
um uh, like uh when you only when you purchase like 10000 quantity or 20000 quantity otherwise um they won't sell okay so asic is also same thing like only when you have like 10000 quantity or 25000 quantity you can go for asic otherwise you cannot go for asic okay the fpgs which is which is very very higher uh, there are fpgs which is available even for uh, 500 rupees it starts from 500 rupees okay 500 to 700 rupees in india uh, like ten dollars like if you compare in us dollars like ten dollars it starts with ten dollars uh, but you have uh fpgs available for even for ten thousand dollars a single chip which costs ten thousand dollars okay which is used for hard real-time constraints okay for nuclear reactor uh, for aerospace applications and for aircraft so fpgs are widely used okay if you check out <coughs> sorry <coughs> If you check any of the difference, uh, uh, if you uh, difference product catalog, you can see a lot of FPGAs. Okay, you can see, you can see the uh, lot of uh, they have they they they, they will be using a lot of FPGAs on this. Uh, whenever if you, if you like if like the rocket I would transceivers. Okay, uh, so if uh, any uh, difference catalogs uh, catalogs uh, you can see FPGAs on it. Uh, so. So GWS is asking like, what do you what do you mean a multi-core and single core? Single core having only one core processor that like it means you can run only one application on it. Whereas multi-core uh, will have two core or four cores. Uh, so you can run uh, you can run each core can run one application. So you can do parallel processing. So that's the advantage. Okay. <coughs> okay. So uh, is that clear? Is that clear till this point? Just type clear in the chat box. Uh, is that clear? Is that clear? Just type clear. Just type uh, clear in the chat box. Okay. okay. So uh, so uh, Bavaram, uh, like how to do five courses in the same time? Uh, so you can complete one by one. Okay. So and uh, that lifetime the validity is lifetime validity. So we didn't limit the validity. So you can do it bound by one. Okay, you start with embedded C language, then you can come for embedded. C. If you don't know C language, you start with embedded C language. Uh, you can and then you learn ESG and IoT. If you Arduino can be learned parallelly. Okay, and you can complete PCB design one by one. Okay, it's all in the mindset. Okay. Uh, Raspberry Pi is SOC. Uh, Shilpa is asking like Raspberry Pi is SOC or DSP? It is SOC. System on chip. What type of chip is using industrial machine? Like Ashish Kumar is asking, what type of chips are using in industrial machine? Mostly of uh, like uh, they some they may have even uh, controllers like uh, like ARM microcontrollers, Cortex M4 microcontrollers from ST Microtronics or uh, it depends. Like uh, uh, so, there are controllers for military like mill grade, okay, uh, which is used for uh, industrials, industrial, industrial like industrial as well as for military grade, okay. And for commercial grid, there are controllers. So you can, when you, whenever you purchase, you can check uh, whether you want industrial grade uh, microcontrollers or the same microcontroller. This you can also use eighty fifty one for and industries. You have to choose the industrial grade. Okay, you can check out once you purchase the industrial grade microcontrollers. Will, the cost of industrial grade microcontrollers will be slightly higher than the consumer grade. This answer is for Ashish Kumar. Okay, so uh, uh, selection of package. Uh, whenever you choose a microcontroller or DSP processor, okay, you, you should be aware of the package. It will be available on DIP package. I have not seen any uh, DSP processors on DIP package or any FPGAs on DIP package. They will be available on, only on the quad flat package or a BGA, okay, not even a SOIC because of the number of pins, which is because of the more number of pins on the uh, chips. Okay, uh, so the PLCC is plastic grid chip carrier. Okay, so uh, when, when if you use a dip package, if you use a dip package, you can use a soldering ion. Okay, if you if you have a quad flat package, you need a soldering station. Okay? If you have a BGA, then you need a O1, uh, which is very high cost, and you also need a stencil. Okay, you also need a stencil to mount the uh, IZ. Okay, uh, so uh, you also need a stencil to mount the IZ. So. Uh, uh, is that clear? Is that is that clear till this point? Is that clear till this point? Uh, the selection of package and the selection of uh, the assembly component. Is that clear? Is that clear? Just type clear in the chat box. Okay. ARM PIC 8021 comes under microcontrollers. Okay. 
um, boy pretty satvik like arm pick edge of tone comes under microcontrollers it's not microprocessor it is microcontrollers <laughs> okay is that clear just type okay. so coming to the processor selection criteria uh, so the process selection criteria uh, uh, you have to choose the processor or uh, based on the development tools okay based on the development uh, based on the uh, development tools uh, what type of development whether you are going to write it in c language or python or the assembly so based on that you have to choose the development tools first uh, number of ios how many number of ios is required for your application that you have to design and the performance uh, like what is the speed you want okay uh, the, it depends upon the clock frequency whether the processor operates at 30 megahertz or 11 megahertz or 100 megahertz that performance you have you need to check what is the maximum performance a processor can support okay and then cost what is the price of the microcontroller and whether the processor can support the rtos okay the controller can support rtos some rtos requires a memory management unit like the windows c if you take windows c it requires a memory management unit okay so uh, whereas a microcontroller linux or linux based rtos they they no need of uh, mmu unit for the for for them okay so you have to check um, whether it will support the necessary RTOS and what kind of hardware tools you need for protection and what are all the peripherals you want. You want CAN or LIN or Ethernet or any high speed peripherals uh, that you have to check and what is the power consumption, what is the operating supply of the microcontroller. Whether if, especially if you want to use this for IoT applications, it should be low powered okay? because uh, you will be sending only the sensor data to the cloud. And it should be battery operated for six months or three months. You cannot change the battery for every day, or you cannot recharge the battery for every day. So it should be like the lifetime of the uh, uh, sensor should be like six months or one year, uh, so that it sends the data continuously for one year. The power consumption you have to check, and the finally you have to check the supply reputations. Okay, how long the product will be available in the market when you design a product? Because um, you, if the, if you if you're not able to purchase the chips in the market. Then you cannot manufacture the product and you cannot sell okay so the lifetime should be minimum five years to ten years so that you can make you can sell the product for five years or ten years so that comes supply reputation so whenever you design a product you have to check all those criteria. okay so is that clear is processor selection criteria is clear for you like just type clear in the chat box uh Sasidhar, like how to load program in each core like uh, each uh, uh, will be uh SOS, uh We'll be discussing like uh, uh, you can you can load uh, you can like if you if you want to do uh, you can use RTOS or you can uh, you can load uh, the separate program code for ARM is, is if you take an OMAP processor you can load a separate code for the ARM core and you can load a separate code for the DSP code that's possible okay okay so thank you thank you so much okay. Uh, so uh, we will be having uh, three to four slides, uh, like, and then we'll be completing completing the session. So please be patient, okay? Uh, so uh, so PLCs mostly the PLCs will have the microprocessor inside. Okay, they will have microprocessor inside. Uh, so the hardware design flow. Uh, so the first thing is the schematic design. Okay, the schematic design where uh, uh, once you, once once you get the requirements from the customer uh, or the uh, once you design once you finalize the product, the 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 first step is to get the schematics ready okay uh, on a software schematic design software you can use use cadence or cad or altium or pats okay uh, eagle so anything you want you, you make the schematics the next process is to bring out the layout design okay layout you have to design the footprints and you have to make a layout okay once the layout is done then you will be sending that for pcb fabrication assemble the pcbs and you test the pcbs you will bring in the board here okay so uh, in schematic design you have a lot of schematic design uh, you have a lot of schematic design considerations has to be done okay and you also have the uh, layout design considerations i have put only few points here uh, but if you check out the uh, material like you have more than nearly 50 to 100 points considerations which you have to take care while you design the schematics okay that's a very lengthy area so uh, just to give a overview of what is schematic design considerations i have put only three to four points okay how to do power supply design first uh, and the ground splitting how to split the analog grounds and digital grounds how to uh, do proper calculation for the capacitors decoupling capacitors 
okay uh, or the because the decoupling capacitors were used to uh, reduce the noise which was generated by the other electronic components okay? and esd production uh, diodes because our hand will pro uh, will produce static electricity which will which will destroy the integrated circuits okay so uh, for that uh, esd protection diodes uh, will be using esd sensitive since uh, since we are using esd sensitive ic's like uh, the dsp processor and fpga or 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 you can you can see this logo on this ic's okay most of the ic's uh, when you touch with bare hands uh, there is a probability of getting uh, the board getting failure okay uh, so for that you have to use esd protection diodes so these are the few schematic design considerations, but there are a lot. Even in low design considerations, there are a lot. So I have put only a few here. Okay, placement of components as per schematic, check footprints, and uh, placement of decoupling capacitor as close to the VCC, and avoid right angle traces, and place a uh, high speed memory close to the processor. So uh, I'm not going to much more details into the layout design constraints and schematic design constraint, uh, constraints, uh, as uh, uh, you can go much more detail on the PCB design part. Okay, so. Uh, just to give a idea, like I have explained you, okay. So uh, 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 let's go for the software design rule. I think we have only two more, uh, four more slides, okay, four more slides, and then we'll procession. So the software design flow is the hardware design flow is clear for you. Just type clear in the chat box. Is the hardware design flow is clear for you? Uh, just type clear in the chat box, okay. I'm waiting for the chat. Okay, so uh, uh, see, uh, Sotwick, uh, actually, the design actually the session is for one hour, okay. But unfortunately, what happens is like uh, when people ask for repeat, uh, I'm uh, it extends for the more time, okay. Uh, so if you like, if uh, uh, so that's a that's a reason for the extension. So I will try to be on time as much as possible for the next uh, for the next session, okay. Uh, so let's uh, the software design flow. So thank thank you so much. Uh, thank you for those who type clear in the chat box. Okay, okay. Uh, so coming to the software design flow, uh, like where you have to choose the uh, the IDE, which you'll be covering in much more detail tomorrow. Okay, so you'll be, you'll be writing the code on the editor on the code editor, which will which uh, the C language or ASM language, which will be fed to a compiler or an assembler. So the compiler will provide you the object files. This object files will be sent to a linker. And the linker will link the object files and will produce the uh, will produce you will will produce an ELF file, okay? ELF file and this ELF file uh, uh, will be converted to a hex file, and this finally this hex file will be downloaded to a chip microcontroller, okay? You'll be downloading the hex file to the micro microcontroller. So this is once you download, then you can you you can debug through an emulation. Okay? You you need a separate hardware called the emulator, of which you will connect it to the necessary target hardware, and you can debug. Okay? You can so. Uh, all this process will be repeated tomorrow, so no worries. Okay. Or you can use uh, if you want to download the program, no, no need of any debugging purpose. Then you can use a programmer. Okay. If you want to debug the program, then you need uh, um, then you need uh, an emulator. Okay. Okay. So basically, there are three processes uh, in embedded system design. One is the simulation. Proteus is an one good example for simulation tool where you no need of any electronic components. Okay, you have the microcontrollers, you have the uh, components inside, you just drag and drop those things and you just uh, simulate the code. Write the program, simulate the program. Okay, so that is simulation. Evaluation is where you have the evaluation board which you can purchase from the manufacturer itself. Okay, or uh, Pantac is an evaluation board manufacturing company. So the, uh, you can also purchase from TA, the, every manufacturer, every uh, semiconductor industry will have their, their own evaluation boards and purchase the evaluation boards, which will also have the debugger on it. Okay. So, and uh, emulation is a process, uh, uh, is a process where you have the, once the actual product is ready. Okay. So you can use the evaluation platform for designing. Once the design is completed, you can go for the emulation. You just connect the emulator with the target processor and with the target uh, uh, and with the source code and you can debug okay so that's an example that's uh, so that's an ex example for emulation for emulation you need the emulator it's it's for debug purpose okay if you want to test the board you want to test if, if you have any bug uh, if you want to debug the bug then you need an emulator so that is emulation so the emulation so simulation evaluation and emulation these are three key process in embedded system design okay 
so galaxy info solution like uh uh yes i'm going fast because like i'm as we are running out of time okay uh, so please do watch the video uh please do watch the video uh, again uh, definitely it will be very clear for uh what is simulation and what is evaluation and what is simulation okay i just repeat the topic simulation no need of any hardware any physical components everything will be on the software you just drag and drop and uh, you can make the connections ready and you can uh check whether the circuit is working or not. So that is simulation. Protis is a software which is a good example for simulation. And evaluation, to have evaluation board is available on the market, okay? either from the manufacturer or from the third party manufacturers. To purchase the evaluation board and download the code and check before designing the board. I'm talking about before designing the board, you purchase the evaluation board, test the board, everything works fine. Then you go for designing your product. Once your product is ready, then you can uh, go for a real-time debugging, okay? Uh, real-time debugging, uh, infield debugging, you, you go for the emulator. You purchase an emulator, go for infield uh, implementation, and you can debug the code and uh, deliver the product. So these are the three process which is essential for designing an ember system design, okay? So I just repeat the topic. So, so once the product is ready, the cabinet design, you can use 3D printer for prototype or if you want to uh, laser laser cutting for cnc machines or if you want uh, if you want to uh, like if you want to uh, for bulk quantity you can go for inject uh, for injection molding or kind of machines okay uh, test jig which is used for testing like uh, whenever you want to manufacture in quantities like 1000 quantity or 10000 quantity uh, you need a test jig which will have a pogo pins like this okay you will have a pogo pins you will be placing the board here like this and you will have the test codes you will be running the test codes uh, so if it, the test sequence is passed, then you can move the board again. If the test sequence is filed, so the um, the the role of the developer will has to, uh, he has to write the solution for it. If the test is filed, what are the things which you have to check? Okay, so that you have to give it to the production team. Uh, only then, like if anything fails, test fails, they will recheck the components at that place. Okay, so test jig is necessary for uh, testing. Uh, because if you want to manufacture thousand boards in one single day, uh, you cannot manually test it. You have you have to automate the process. So that's a role. That's a process of testing. So you 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 have a pogo pins. Uh, these these pins are called pogo pins. Okay, these pins are called pogo pins where uh, you make a like where you place the board and you should you should leave uh, uh, you you should leave a proper a proper uh, uh, test points for this. Okay. Uh, so that is designed for testability. Okay? You, if you go through, if you do some research on Google, what is designed for testability, uh, you can you can understand that. Okay, so you should uh, you should have some test points on the board. Whenever you when you design the board itself, you have to take care of the test points, uh, planning with the test jig. Okay, so that this this pogo points will come in contact with the test points. So that's the role of test jig. Okay? So recap. Uh, choose an idea, design applications, select the processors, uh, design and fabricate PCB, component assembly, okay? And uh, you choose the language, integration and testing, okay? So that's all a uh, recap of designing an Ember system design, okay? Uh, so uh, I asked my team to post the uh, attendance link, okay? So please do post the attendance link on the, on the chat box. I'll just explain you the difference between YouTube and internship uh, for, uh, uh, like for YouTube webinar, it is free for this 30 days, okay? You, and the content will be removed for after five days, but you can attend and like you can attend, uh, if, if you have an attendance of 25 days or 27 days, you will get a certificate, free certificate, okay? So that is, uh, uh, that is there. Uh, there is no, uh, like there is no recordings. So that's, that's the one thing, okay? And there is no, uh, like there is no bonus sessions, hackathon sessions, there is no community access. Okay, and there is no intensive like a uh, hackathon or inter intensive. So, uh, so that's uh, that's a uh, YouTube. Whereas the fine one course, you get five course, uh, you get embedded C, uh, embedded system design. Okay, so if you want to make your career, uh, definitely this course will help for you. This course will help for you, like embedded C, embedded system design, IoT, and PCB design, and Arduino, uh, which you has a lifetime validity, and you get you you have. Uh, the VIP community, VIP Telegram group uh, for uh, for posting the questions on the Google form and you get a reply. We ensure that you get a reply for each and every questions which you ask. Okay, so that's a, that's the difference. 
and if you want to make a carrier on MRS Design, so you could you could make use of this course and the price course price is same triple nine rupees. Okay, so these are the stuffs which you will be learning like eighty two no architecture, pick architecture, arm seven, the same thing which is got up on the free. Okay, so the content is same. The content is same for free and for the internship. The only thing is uh, you have some additional content as the hackathons, as uh, uh, as 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 the uh, the additional courses as well as the community access okay so the community access is a key thing uh so iot master class and uh, iot uh, like iot master class things speak okay um <coughs> just give me a moment like i will take the questions within within two two slides okay uh i uh, so iot master class and uh, you have this embedded C program. Embedded C program, like if you if you want to start from scratch, and the PCB design masterclass, like how to design this board, the exact board, the what what the image what I shown as the board has been designed. So you could also design the same board. You can also design your own microcontroller board. So that's the objective of this course, so that you can design your own product. Okay, if you want to want to make your own product and if you want to sell and if you want an entrepreneur, uh, then uh, uh, you can make use of the community as well as you can make use of this course. Okay, so this course like is triple nine rupees. So you get one thirty days, one thirty days of learning. You can design your own two two layer microcontroller board. Okay, you get lifetime community access, entrepreneurs coaching, and you have uh, four internship cert certificates, and you have hackathons in every week, and a uh, VIP Telegram group for thirty days challenge. Okay, uh, will be active only for this thirty days for task and activity. So this is what you get. So thank you so much. Um, uh, 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 thank you so uh, th thank you so much. Uh, that runs link is there on the chat box. If you want to fill that runs form, you can fill. Uh, if you want to ask me questions, like please do post the questions on the chat box. I'm waiting for your questions. Okay. Before that, uh, how to become uh, a successful embedded engineer? Okay. Uh, uh, how to become a su successful embedded engineer? Like uh, I will give you a, a mind map for this. Uh, you can learn this. Uh, you can learn this stuffs. Okay. Uh, you can learn from anywhere, like not only from Pantac, you can learn from anyone. Uh, I didn't, I didn't tell you like that you have to learn from, uh, learn from Pantac. Uh, you can learn from anywhere on this, uh, in, in, uh, on, uh, on this, on this internet. Okay. So uh, first, the first in hard skills. Okay. I have, I have split out hard skills, soft skills, and mindset, what, whichever is necessary. The hard skills, uh, the basics you have to cover up Python, C, MATLAB, and HTML and CSS and JavaScript, especially for IoT. Okay, you have to learn these four skills. Okay, MATLAB is used for simulation. It's used, it's used for simulation, especially when you want to implement AI algorithms on embedded processors. Uh, uh, MATLAB will be helpful for you how uh, to learn the AI algorithms uh, and embedded. Uh, in embedded, like uh, you start with embedded C. You start with embedded C. You start with Arduino. Uh, 851, okay. Uh, you start with 851, pick microcontroller, ARM7, Cortex M4 architecture, Node MCU, uh, Node MCU, and STM32, okay. Uh, STM32, or you can take MSP430 also. The, you can also you can you can also take other microcontrollers, okay. Uh, these microcontrollers we are using these microcontrollers, so I have listed. But if you have if you if you have also taken courses on other microcontrollers, uh, it is okay. But you have to uh, cover up all the peripherals, uh, peripherals which I listed on the yesterday class. Like the UART, SPI, I2C, uh, PPA, and uh, the uh, CAN, LIN. Okay, so if you cover up all those peripherals, then that is okay. okay? Then you can embed driver development, pre autos, okay, uh, Raspberry Pi, and FPG. Okay, so <coughs> sorry. So you can you can learn these things. Okay, and IoT, you just learn these three clouds. Things speak uh, AWS IoT, Microsoft Azure. Uh, I, I missed two clouds. Uh, one is the Google Cloud, okay, and IBM. You can also, if you can come cover up IBM, also it's okay. And embedded AI, you can cover up Raspberry Pi or Pink or Jetson Nano, okay. So uh, running AI algorithms on embedded systems because most of the uh, embedded chips uh, they need the capability. Uh, like self driving cars, you cannot uh, for self driving cars. Whenever you take a self driving cars, like um, you cannot send, you cannot send uh, each and uh, each and uh, for each and every decisions to the cloud and wait for a decision. So uh, competition has to be done locally. Okay, so uh, so autonomous robots, uh, so the autonomous robots, the delivery robots will be the future, which has uh, 
where you have to run the AI algorithms on it. So embedded AI is the most, uh, uh, it's very much needed, okay. Uh, and MATLAB, uh, you have to learn the fundamentals of MATLAB, uh, image processing with MATLAB, single processing with MATLAB, machine learning with MATLAB, deep learning with MATLAB, app development using MATLAB. All this fun, all this are necessary and board design, uh, you design your own board, like a board or microcontroller board. Uh, you should be able to design a microcontroller board or, or uh, any simple board is okay, okay? So um, if you're able to design a two-layer board or four-layer board, it's okay. And PCB design, you can use any software like uh, Allegro, Altium, or KiCad, okay? Uh, even freeware is okay, like, okay? But if you should know the concepts, okay? And like applications, brain computer interface, software defined radio, self-driving car, okay? So these are the things which you have to uh, learn and soft skills, uh, you can learn how to write your resume because whatever you learn, uh, you want to build up your resume, okay? Uh, so how, how to build up your resume for uh, tracking systems, okay? Or for, for automated tracking systems. And interview skills, time management and leadership skills and LinkedIn mastery, uh, personal branding and communication skills. These skills are necessary, okay? And mindset, uh, 30 days of mindset and money mastery and character redefining, okay? So uh, the reason I include this course is uh, like, uh, definitely like uh, even though you work for a job or anything else uh, you should uh, learn finance okay so finance is a skill which is a very essential skill even for engineers okay even if you do a day-to-day -day job or uh, you should be able you should know how to manage money okay if you don't know how to manage money then like even if you earn a lot of money like you'll be losing it so uh, uh, so finance is a skill which is very absolutely necessary like uh, you should have multiple streams of income Okay, you should not depend on one income. You should have multiple streams of income and you should be able to manage this money. So that for that, I have kept this money mastery, okay? So these are the things, uh, skills uh, is necessary. Like if you want to make successful on this career, on a system design career, okay? So learn the skills. Uh, so uh, definitely, definitely like if you learn and if you market yourself on LinkedIn, or if you market yourself on the platforms like the Naukri platforms, uh, so if you uh, if you modify the resume according to that, uh, so that definitely definitely even if you are a fresher or even if you have any gap, uh, definitely you can change. Okay, you can change. It's all in the mindset. Okay, it's all in the mindset. Uh, with this, uh, I uh, I close the session. So uh, I'll take Q and A now. Uh, so uh, please put your questions on the chat box. I'll take Q and A and we'll close it uh, within the uh, next 10 minutes, okay? I'll share you the mind map. I'll share you the mind map. I'll share you the PPT as a PDF format through email as well as on the Telegram group. If you are not there in the Telegram group, please do join the Telegram group or uh, I will also try to sh uh, share it on the WhatsApp group, okay? Uh, Sumit, uh, like, yes, uh, we have disabled the uh, group chat as of now, like, uh, because we are waiting for a few more students to join, Sumit. Uh, we are waiting for a uh, few more students to uh, join. Uh, for time being, I'll be putting a Google form to communicate with me. So you please fill up the form there, okay? So we are waiting for, uh, like, till, uh, like, till tonight on, so that we'll be enabling it, uh, um, like, on, probably on Monday, okay? Uh, so... Uh, I'll be issuing the activity plan, uh, the 30 days activity plan on the Telegram group. Okay, so probably on from Monday we will start the activity. It's a 30 day. It, it's a 30 day activity plan. So I'll be using issuing the task and the activity, and I'll be sharing the uh, like the question, the Q and A questions, like whatever the questions, what you ask, what people ask, that will be shared on the Telegram group, as well as uh, if possible, like we will have some questions. Okay, interview questions or like that. <coughs> Okay. So, so thank you so much. Uh, I, I have a question here. Just give me a moment. Military will be easily available to uh, multi grade. Um, uh, yes, it is available. Like you can purchase, you can purchase from Digiki, uh, 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 private sector, uh, but still you can purchase the conference. Uh, but if you are an individual, okay, if you are an individual, you cannot even uh, find a, uh, you cannot even purchase a conference from US. You need an import export license, uh, which will cost you around 2000 rupees. Okay. Uh, buying an import export even if you are an individual you can still get a license for import export license you can still get um for uh, uh for 2000 bucks there are a lot of online websites uh, so if you want to purchase from digiki uh you please have a license okay otherwise you have to the only way you can you can do things is by uh, 
uh, the components which is available on the local market. Okay, if you are a student, all the all the components are available in the local market already. So uh, if you, if you are a company, uh, then definitely like you, you you please purchase you please enroll for IE import export license. Okay, this answer is for Himanshu. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, uh, Madhusudan, the Aligro course is on like uh, the Cadence Aligro course uh, is on PCB design. Okay, so if the triple N course is there, okay, so it's it's of ARCAD, it's of ARCAD, but most most of the components is almost same on ARCAD as well as on Aligro. Uh, Subramanian is asking like which processor is using robotic process automation. Uh, honestly speaking, like I have not worked on the robotic process automation. Like uh, what? Uh, so RPAs, I have not worked. Uh, is that uh, I have worked on uh, the business automation, but uh, robotic process automation, uh, the robotics, I have not worked. I'm not able to comment this one. Uh, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry for this. Okay. So then, Raj, in, in two core chip, how to uh, military grade? Okay, which processor is using? Okay, in uh, ASIC examples, ASIC examples. I told you, like uh, the Intel Movidis chip is an example. Uh, we have uh, Pantech has an ASIC chip, okay, uh, but it's not from from Pantech. Uh, we have a tie up with a company called uh, Neurosky to manufacture the EEG headband. Uh, so that EEG headband has an ASIC module. Okay, it's a proprietary model from module from the. Um, uh, from the uh, from the Neurosky TGM, it's called TGM. If you Google in TGM, it it you'll get a thin gear ASIC module. Okay, thin gear ASIC module. Uh, so based on this ASIC module, we we are manufacturing this EEG headbands, which is used to measure focus, uh, which is used to which is used to help uh, the uh, ADHD childrens like the attention deficiency childrens. Okay, even company they purchase products from us for uh, for increasing focus. Uh, we have uh, some. Uh, we have the brain controlled robots, uh, which uh, by playing the brain controlled robots by by driving the car, you can increase the focus by practicing focus because uh, the, because you you drive the car based on your focus. Okay, uh, so that is that you, that product uses the ASIC module, Thinger ASIC module. You can Google and you can check TGAM Thinger ASIC module. Okay, that that's a module. Actually, it's a microcontroller. It's a simple microcontroller. What they have done is, if it is microcontroller, they have you can decode it easily. Okay, so there is no market for that. So what they have done is, they made it as an ASIC module, especially for uh, to to avoid the uh, copying. Okay, to avoid copy. So that's a that's a thing. Intel Movie Stick is an example for ASIC module. This answer is for uh, I think I missed a chat. Uh, I don't know. Like someone is asking for ASIC module. Example for ASIC module. Okay, what are the important things uh, which uh, Sagar is asking? Like, what are the important things which we need to have, uh, which ne which we need to have to perform a practical on your own? Uh, you should have uh, Sagar. Like, you should you should have a, um, a multimeter and you should have a logic analyzer and you should uh, that will cost you the logic analyzer will cost you six hundred rupees. Okay, uh, logic analyzer and you should have. Uh, if possible, you should have, you can have a USB oscilloscope, uh, which will cost you around 5,000 rupees, okay, from hand tech, um, USB oscilloscope. So uh, this is okay. Even if there is no oscilloscope, it's still okay. Still okay. You have a logic, you have a logic analyzer and you have a uh, multimeter and you have a power supply unit, like the variable power supply unit from 0 to 30 volt, so that you can generate a variable power supply, okay, and the breadboard components. Uh, uh, so this is enough uh, with the soldering iron or that's enough that's enough this answer is for Sagar. we don't have a full stack web development krishna uh, we don't have full stack web. can we use a dsp processor for general purpose uh, there's a question like anim is asking like can we use dsp processor for general purpose uh see general purpose uh, when uh, it's limited the memory is limited in dsp processor general purpose processor are not like that Okay, so memory you, you can uh, like uh, the the memory is not limited and uh, uh, like uh, uh, you cannot extend uh, DSP processor cannot be extend like uh, whereas in general purpose processor you can extend but few applications the applications which you want like uh, if you want to port an operating system uh, definitely I think our DSP does not have a memory management unit which will not support to port an Windows uh, operating system or 
linux based operating uh, linux will support linux will support windows operating system is not possible on a dsp processor okay uh, maybe the windows c uh, is possible on the warm up platform uh, which has the arm 11 core so arm 11 core you can uh, you can port windows c windows c windows embedded c embedded windows embedded uh, on that but windows is not possible okay this is for anim uh the protocols i think uh, we have covered up the protocols like uh spa i2c and uart and um, uh on the embedded driver development embedded driver development series okay do we have jobs uh in embedded system uh what is starting package okay uh see embedded systems there is a lot of vacancy okay there is a lot of vacancy uh see when you if you have a five years of experience you can get a package of around like 20 lakh or you can like five years you can go about 12 lakhs okay uh which is not possible on the other uh it fields it fields that's that's the one advantage of the semiconductor industry it's it's, it's uh, if you have experience of five years or six years or ten years uh, you will you you can get a large sum of money okay uh, so that is possible you know, on embedded uh, on 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 this embedded on the semiconductor industry uh, because like I have seen a lot of people working from Pantac like uh, like uh, who are now getting like uh, for 35 lakh uh, per annum and 45 lakh per annum uh, like uh, who is who worked at 2010 uh, like 10 years of experience 35 lakh per annum okay uh, which uh, the same category on the software uh, is, is almost like a 15 lakh to 20 lakh package uh, so. Uh, the package is higher if they when if the experience is high the package is higher on the semiconductor industry this answer is for gamers gamership esp32 is a soc or an sym okay See, actually uh, i'll tell you what uh, the esp32 module okay is manufactured by expressive systems which contains the same esp32 chip okay uh, the version of the chip like uh, if you check esp32 the version hyphen s that's an soc system on chip Okay, uh, but if you purchase the module, the SOM is nothing but a system on modules, okay, which has other electronic components on a PCB, printer circuit boards. That's SOM, system on modules. Okay, SOC is nothing but chip, it's an integrated circuits, system on chip. Okay, uh, so uh, the ESP, if you talk about the ESP32 module, the system on module, which has the SOC, ESP32 SOC. Okay, if you remove the if you remove that uh, uh, connector like uh, the EMA EMA connector, there is a EMA shield on it. Uh, if you remove the EMA shield and if you check out, there is an integrated circuits which is an SOC. That's an ESP32 IC. The name is same again ESP32. Okay, this answer is for uh, uh, Shamim Hazan. I mean, what is the name of the software simulation of ESD and also for evaluation and emulation? Uh, for ESD uh, for simulation, like you can use Proteus, uh, Sham. Uh, you can use Proteus. Evaluation is. <laughs> <coughs> evaluation is like um uh, it's like third party manufacturers okay like um even pantac is a third party manufacturer for the evaluation boards uh texas has their own evaluation boards you have to check whether you need programming facility or debugging facility is available on the board or not so that is evaluation okay a lot of that's a hardware yeah, evaluation is a hardware the emulation is also again a hardware okay it's an emulator it's it's called emulator for example if you want to uh, program a dsp processor or if you want to debug a dsp processor you need a D emulator for that xds100 emulator either even if you use a st microcontroller you need an emulator okay uh, like only then then only like you can debug in real time okay you can download the program run you can keep breakpoints stop the execution of the program you go one by one so that is possible this answer is fun jam nike uh like i have like uh one question like one be reason uh stephen like stephen because the material will be received uh i think within if you are from india like i think uh, the, the enrollment will be done automatically within five to ten minutes okay uh so anyone want to leave you can leave like i'm just answering the questions those who asked like um So uh, NA multisim software circuit design we can use. I think uh, national instruments are like they have some pixel microcontrollers like uh, how to check. Okay. So
So uh, let's. If you use a microcontroller to measure temperature and use it as a specific application and same microcontroller machine also, can I say it multipurpose? Uh, Rahman is asking like if I use a microcontroller for measure temperature and use it as a specific application and use the same microcontroller for measuring ultrasound, just use it for another application. Can I say multipurpose? No, like I'm not getting a point, uh, Rahman. Like uh, you can use it for you can use for measuring temperature. You can use for ultrasonic. Uh, you can use a uh, even you can use the same microcontroller to do the same task. Okay. Uh, I'm not getting your point. Uh, there's a difference between what is the difference between VLSA and embedded? Uh, VLSA and embedded. See, uh, see uh, you can use uh, FPGA. See, when you take VLSA, like very lot scale integration, like you have field programming areas and FPGAs, okay? Uh, and the chip design, other chip design areas. If you take FPGAs and CPLDs, can you use CPLDs and FPGA for embedded system design? Okay, so embedded system design is an area. Where the processor is different, like the microcontroller is different. Okay, you can you, you can all, even also you can also use a DSP processor for MR systems. You can also use FPGAs for MR systems. Okay, or uh, CPLDs for MR systems. Can we reprogram in SOC? Yes, uh, Bula, like you can reprogram in SOC, like ESP32. Uh, you can you can reprogram. Uh, uh, is it possible to program FPGA as uh, Arduino? See, uh, is it possible to program FPGA as Arduino? I'll tell you what, uh, Manjula Lakshma Kumara, like Manjula, like I'll tell you, like what is, uh, is, is it possible to program FPGA as an Arduino? Okay, so if you want, see, Arduino is nothing but, it's Arduino is a company, okay, uh, which uh, who manufactures the development boards uh, based on uh, the AVR microcontrollers. Now it is microchip, okay. Uh, previously, it was the company was called AVR, uh, Atmel, uh, Atmel, they manufacture this AVR microcontrollers. Uh, and they uh, this uh, this uh, Arduino company uh, company uh, has developed these development boards. The advantage with them is they have their own IDE, okay, the integrated development in Arduino IDE, uh, which which they have a lot of libraries on it, where you no need to worry about the uh, peripherals. Like for sending us you what communication, you can write a simple code, okay. So with that simple code, you can call those libraries from this, uh, call those functions from the libraries, okay? And you can finish the application within 10 minutes. So that's what Arduino does, okay? So if you want to implement the AVR microcontroller inside FPGA, that is possible, okay? So uh, Arduino, uh, just understand, Arduino is a company which manufactures the development board and which, uh, uh, which where they develop the softwares called Arduino, they have their own IDE, okay? which is very user-friendly. For, for developing applications. Okay. So if uh, if that board, the Arduino, you know, which has the ABR microcontroller, if you want to implement the ABR microcontroller in the FPGA, that is possible. Okay. That's possible. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, like uh, so, I will uh, see you on tomorrow. Uh, we'll uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, if uh, if you learn something valuable uh, today, just type valuable in the chat box, okay? Uh, with this, I'll close the session. I'm waiting for chat, okay? Is that valuable or not? Else, just type no in the chat box, okay? Whatever it is okay for me, I'll take your feedbacks. Uh, is that session is valuable today? Uh, if you want to recap or revise, the video will be available, okay? For three to five days. Just go through the video and uh, uh, you, like you can, uh, you can, uh, like if you have any questions, post questions on the chat box, okay, on the comment box. I'll go through it. Questions. Uh, Akash, uh, thank you, and uh, Manjula, thank you, and uh, Kamish, thank you, Anim, thank you, uh, Sagar, thank you, and um, uh, Pujita, thank you, and uh, Rama, thank you, Sri Krishna, thank you, Vidya, thank you, Sanjay, thank you, it's me, PK, thank you, Sri Krishna, thank you, and uh, Nagaraj, thank you. What hardware software prerequisites are needed to successfully complete the five internship masterclass course? Okay, uh, Gijo, like you can get 8051 board for uh, 600 rupees to 700 rupees in the local market. Okay, so purchase an 8051 board, and uh, pick board is also same. Like you can get for thousand thousand to thousand five hundred rupees. Arm board also you can get for thousand rupees. Okay, 
uh, you can purchase one by one one by one it's your wish either you go by single shot or either you can go by one by one but definitely uh, when you do with the real hardware you will get the guts of uh, learning the amata system design okay instead of design instead of uh, instead of having the simulation okay so uh, so i uh, i uh, recommend you to purchase the boards and to set up a lab okay if you are an embedded system design engineer uh, definitely you should have a lab at your home okay make some videos uh, post it on youtube post it on linkedin make some noise on linkedin so that people will see on you and uh, they like they will send you you will generate a lot of inquiries for job if you want to if you want to market yourself uh, linkedin is the best platform for you or uh, make a video on the projects what you build and put a blog post on linkedin and share it to your friends and share it like try to connect with as much of people uh, it's free okay so you do that and promote yourself and build your own brand and uh, uh, and you get you can get your own job okay uh, so shamim thank you uh, bola thank you and um, hdmi port hdmi port is used for pc board in electronic see uh, tech hackers hdmi port is used for pc circuit board in electronics see hdmi is an interface it's a peripheral okay ha a high definition multimedia interface if you want to connect the hdmi monitors or any hdmi inputs and outputs uh, you need that interface it's just like vga interface as like the other interface like uot interface hdmi is an interface which is used to interface with the uh, display devices okay <coughs> so thank you so much thank you so much for your time and signing off thank you so much see you on tomorrow until then bye bye take care